Are you looking for a competitive advantage using mouse and keyboard on your favorite console? We've got the product just for you. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. There are a ton of mouse and keyboard adapters that you can get to use on your modern generation console. We're talking about PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, and Nintendo Switch. Now, there are a ton of adapters, as you've already heard, and we've got three such adapters right here. These are all provided by Aimsonix, and we've done a review on all of these already. If you're looking for an unboxing and review on any of the ones that you see here, we've got that video on this channel. But today we're gonna to be doing an unboxing and review of the Aimsonix Striker Pro. This is the mid-tier mouse and keyboard adapter in their lineup. Obviously they've got the Monster, which is the top end, and they've got the Blader, which is on the low end, and this guy, which slots nicely in the middle. Now we wanna talk specifically about this adapter. We're gonna do an unboxing, see what comes in it. We'll connect it up to my PlayStation, and then we'll give you our actual hands-on impressions. So there's a lot to unpack in this video, but we should probably start with unpacking this device. Now, the first thing that we notice is the packaging. The packaging is actually full color, as you can see here. It's got a nice little neat design, 3D animated graphic. It's got some of the details on the back about what this does, but probably you bought it online, so you're not really gonna be looking at this because you looked at the spec sheet on the Amazon store before you bought it and tried to decide if this was the right one for you. It might be the right one for you, and if it is, we will have a link in the description down below that you can click to get this yourself. So let's uh, move on to opening it up. I'll open it up to you guys first on this camera here. Okay, and right off the bat, we can see there's, there's not a lot to this. So there's the device there. We'll look at the device a little bit closer in a minute, but I wanna see what else is in here. Underneath here, we've got a USB cord and we've got a Striker Pro user manual that has the full getting started guide. Now, this has QR code to online instructions. It also, talks about all of your button mapping, which keyboard key matches the buttons for every controller that you can imagine. Now this is app supported as well, and we will explore connecting it to the app and see what that looks like in just a moment. But first, we gotta see what this USB cord is all about. Now the cord, it actually looks quite long. This is a good five foot long cord. It does come with this USB-A to USB, well, it's the other way around, USB-C to USB-A adapter and it's a USB-A cord to USB-C. This is gonna be used to actually connect the device up, but if you're using it on a device where you needed USB-C to USB-C, you can use this adapter to make it into one of those. Moving that out of the way, we can explore the device for the first time. Now, on the side here, it's got two USB-C ports. That's actually gonna be important, and you can see, I'll show you, one of them has a picture of what I'm gonna call a console. So this one has to be made, that connection has to be made. It connects from this device to the console. The other one has a little lightning bolt next to it. And that lightning bolt is for an external power source. Now, why would you need an external power source? The reality is this device draws a lot of power. When we get to the connection, you're gonna see that we also connect a console controller to it and we connect our mouse and we connect our keyboard. There's gonna be a lot of power draw through this device and on all those extra peripherals. And sometimes the console can't handle having all of that power going through just one USB port. So this lightning bolt is for adding an additional power supply. That can be supplied from a power brick, it can be supplied from the TV USB, or it can be powered from another USB port on the actual console itself. So you got lots of options there. Moving around to the side, we see there's a controller icon there. You must plug in a controller for the system you're using. If you're using a PlayStation 4, you plug in a PlayStation 4 controller. If you're using an Xbox, you plug in an Xbox controller. That license key is extracted from the controller and passed to the console so that it thinks that this device is just a controller. It performs like a man in the middle attack almost so that you can use your mouse and keyboard inputs and it sends them as controller inputs 
to the actual console. There's also a headphone port on here, so that's really great news for those of you that are using wired headphones. You can plug that in and get all of your audio through the headphones without having to use a separate dongle. Now, you can also use a USB powered headphone or a USB headset, or in the case of your Xbox, you can use Xbox branded headset that works wirelessly. You do not have to use this headphone port, but it is there for those of you who have wired headsets. Moving around to the other side, there are two more USB ports. These are gonna be used for your keyboard and your mouse. Now you can use, and it's recommended to use a wired keyboard and mouse. You can also use wireless. The only thing I would say about using wireless is if you have problems, the wireless could be part of the problem. And it's hard to troubleshoot where your problem actually is when you introduce more points of failure. So for me, I prefer wired. In this video, I'm gonna use wired keyboard and mouse. You guys are gonna make fun of the keyboard and mouse that I'm using, but it's the one I've got. If you've got a better one, that's really great for you. And I'm happy for you that you have the keyboard and mouse that you like. This is the keyboard and mouse that I have. That's really the whole device. On the top, there's a power button here. You probably can do uh, multi-taps to sync between profiles and stuff, but most of the magic of this device is gonna actually happen on the app. Now we will get the app set up and connected to this device so that you can see the full connection. And then I'll tell you my hands-on impressions of the device. Now we're here at the PlayStation 5. We have it all connected. And the first question you're gonna ask is, does this work with PlayStation 5 games? No, it does not work with PlayStation 5 games. It will work on your PlayStation 5, just like it'll work on your PlayStation 4, or your PlayStation 3, or your Xbox, or your Switch, but it will not work on PlayStation 5 games. I will show you that in a minute. And some of you may even be wondering, well, Anton, what about the B Savior U5 dongle that you've used in other videos to make keyboard and mouse adapters work? Again, the answer unfortunately is no, it will not work with the B Savior U5 dongle. And I'll show you exactly why that is right now. You see, the greatest advantage of this is that it is app supported. And during the connection process, the secret to it not working with the PlayStation 5 is revealed. So here we are on the app, we're gonna click add. Now it's gonna be looking for any active Ames and X products. Now in this case, it finds our Striker Pro and it connects to it. If it's not connecting, it's probably not on. You should see this rainbow design with a little blue light on there. If you don't, you just hit the power button, it'll power on and then it will find it. Now as we scan through the list here, it does not list a PlayStation 5. Now, if you watched our monster connection guide, you know that this tab here looks exactly the same on the monster, but there's an additional tab that says for PlayStation 5, and that's because they use the remote play connectivity on the monster. On this, there is no Wi-Fi or LAN connection, so we can't use remote play. And for whatever reason, the app does not allow third-party devices, such as the B-Savior U5, to connect that way to the system. Now, the B Savior U5 does work with other mouse and keyboard adapters, and we showed you on the blader that it actually works on that. So you might have to decide, do I wanna use it on PlayStation 5 games, or am I fine using it on PlayStation 4 games on my PlayStation 5 system? I know what my choice is, but your choice might be different. Now, for the connectivity, we're gonna call this a PlayStation 4 because essentially right now, this is a PlayStation 4 Pro, basically. I'm gonna say, okay, there we go. Now we are connected. I have the ability to pull up the main configuration file. This allows us to adjust the sensitivity, the smoothness. It has aim boost on here, where if you're playing a first person shooter, you can turn up like aim assist so that it locks onto your targets better. You have adjustable dead zone and you have ballistic curve. So you can see that's what the curve looks like. We can change that to be more linear if that's what we want. And that will affect basically your mouse input. You also have the ability to add ABS binds. You have the ability to add trigger modes, and you also have the ability to go through your key binds and adjust which key is mapped to which button on your controller. So if you don't wanna use C for the O button, then you can change that to whatever you want. As it is, your standard config is gonna be exactly what you're used to seeing with a regular keyboard and mouse setup. So it's set up to be familiar for what most players are using already, specifically in your first person shooter type games. Now, we can boot up PlayStation 4 version of Black Ops 4, but you guys already know that that game supports mouse and keyboard 
already. So it wouldn't be anything special if we booted that up. The first thing I wanna do is go to Astro's Playroom. And I just wanna show you what happens when you try to load a PlayStation 5 game that specifically wants a PlayStation 5 controller. So if I press X, you're gonna see PlayStation 5 games can't be played using the current controller. That's because this is mimicking a PlayStation 4 controller for the input settings that we're using here. So if I move around, nothing happens. If I press escape, I can go back to my home menu and navigate my home menu. So I'm gonna just go into Contra. We'll try booting that up. Now I haven't played this game yet, so we'll see what kind of cutscene and stuff we see here but I should be able to play the game using mouse and keyboard. Now, if this uses the analog sticks, which I don't know if it does, then my mouse will work as well. Let's find out. This might not be a good keyboard and mouse game. Press X, sounds good to me. We're gonna go to newbie mode because I am not, well, I mean, I'm using a mouse and a keyboard. How good can I be? Watch out for Venom. Cutscene is finally over on this game and now I can show you that we've got full control. So I'm just mousing around, or not mousing, I'm moving, using my keyboard to move around. X obviously is jump, C does nothing. This is probably gonna be fire as soon as I get through the tutorial here. Now this is definitely the wrong game to be showing you guys mouse and keyboard because of how the aiming works on here. I do not recommend trying to use this game. What other games have I got in here? So that wasn't working well. So we're into Black Ops 4. I've got the sensitivity set up to be super high sensitivity. Stop it. Ha. Yeah. So obviously you can see that it works. Let's jump back and let's talk about the plus and downside of this. So you've seen that it connects up to our PlayStation 5 using just PlayStation 4 games. Now, how does this actually compare and work on your system? First thing I have to say is you're gonna use that app to fine tune your settings. Initially, it might be a little bit clunky. It might be a little bit unclear exactly what you're doing, but once you get it dialed in, it does work very, very well. What is your input lag like? It's really non-existent. It, it works well, like I said. So it's a standard keyboard and mouse controller adapter, but it has the added functionality of using that app. It is fully upgradable, so in the future they could add extra features and whatever, but in the core functionality right out of the box, it works just fine. Now, you're also gonna be wondering, what about on my Xbox? So recently Microsoft banned third-party devices from working on your Xbox. Does this work on the Xbox, even though that update has taken place? The short answer is yes, probably. Now that's because of the way that it actually works. Since this is mimicking a controller, Xbox has no idea if you are using an actual controller or this adapter to spoof that controller. Because of the way that works, it will survive through that unauthorized device blocking system. Now you might think that's good, you might think that's bad. I'm indifferent to it, I'm just saying that it will work. So when they say this works on all of your Xbox, all of your PlayStation, and your Nintendo Switch, it truly does. Now is this the right device for you? It really depends on the feature set you're looking for and the price that you're looking to pay. This one slots nicely between the low-end blader and the high-end monster, and it adds a lot of the main features that the monster offers at a lower price point. So it could be exactly what you're looking for. If it is, there's a link in the description. You can click that, it helps support this channel and it gets you the products that you're looking for. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video. We'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.